Joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, my special, special, special guest today, talented singer, songwriter, and video animator. That's a first for this show. I'd like to welcome Foxford to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad to be here. Oh, thanks for coming. Uh, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Um, I got some information from your from your team, uh, and you have a new single out called Oni. Did I pronounce that right? Mm-hmm. Oni? Yep, okay, great. great. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit because you have a very interesting story and I think people will be interested in, in hearing that. Uh, but before we get started, um, tell us a little bit about Foxford. Uh, so I'm a long career. Um, my career path has kind of taken me as a video game animator for a long time. Uh, I grew up playing music in Memphis, Tennessee, my hometown. Uh, but I never really took music too seriously. Uh, I was in a jazz band growing up. I played classical band, marching band, all of these different instruments. But for some reason, I never really thought about being a musician at all. Um, and in 2013, I started my career in animation after graduating college. Uh, and I had a traumatic experience where my mom passed away. And at the moment, I didn't want to do anything related to you know, the job that I was doing at the time. Uh, so I kind of held off from animation and I wanted to find a way to kind of express myself because I became a little locked um, in terms like emotionally when my mom passed away and I, I turned to music. So I kept practicing music because I wanted to, you know, tell some songs about memories and kind of remember things. And I kind of just kept doing it as a hobby and I attracted the attention of uh, a producer in New York that's been producing for a lot of new up and coming artists for a long time, uh, Yarn Fuchs. And I sent him a couple samples. We made a, a, a kind of like a, a plan for what I might do to expand as an artist. Uh, and currently we're just on that path, uh, just making music, having fun. And I'm, I'm kind of including all of my talents that I've accumulated over the years to be an artist. And uh, so that's kind of the, the general synopsis of kind of what what brought me to this point. OK, um, let's go back to your um, your childhood. Now, um, you're from Memphis, Tennessee. Do you have do you have siblings who um, who sing as well or? I do have uh, an older brother and a younger sister. Uh, my younger sister was really good at clarinet because uh, my, my brother, I think, got by without having to be in music, but my dad forced me into music uh, when we started going into like middle school and high school. So I think that's about all. Uh, I think my mom and dad had a uh, musical talent. I think it was drums, but I can't remember which parent it was. Uh, and, and that's about it. So a little bit of a music family, but I, I don't think any of us really took advantage of it. <laughs> it, it. It's an interesting thing. We all love to listen to music, but none of us really committed to it uh except for me at okay. this point was uh, so was music played a lot uh growing up in your house oh yeah uh my dad was he was notorious for just jamming out uh to, to all sorts of things like he listened to a lot of LL Cool J uh Tribe Called Quest he was always playing like some sort of typically R&B um and my mom would always play gospel music like that soulful gospel um which is kind of known quite a bit around Memphis. Uh, so I think by, by default, I kind of downloaded those experiences and a lot of jazz. There was a lot of jazz as well. Um, okay. and, and I think I was a classical kid. Like I just naturally gravitated towards classical music early oh. on. And then, okay. Were you, um, now you mentioned that your, um, your parents sort of pushed you maybe aggressively to uh, music. Yep. Were you, um, were you musically inclined before that? Was that something you actually embraced or was something that you kind of went kicking and screaming? Uh, well, I, I, was, I was a pretty obedient kid, so I wouldn't say I was kicking and screaming, but the earliest passion that I had was in video games. I started playing video games very, very, very young. Uh, so my parents had to kind of pull that away from me. And my dad, he kind of tricked me in, in middle school. He said, 
you, you have to play one instrument in order to play video games. If you want to continue to play video games, you have to pick something that to, to play and kind of dedicate yourself to and practice and be good. Uh, and so the first thing I said was I want to be a drummer. Like I want to, drums are cool. I didn't really think about it much before then. I was like, I'm going to be a drummer and, and you can't say anything about it. And he was like, well, you know, saxophonists get, they, saxophonists get the girls. They're, they're smooth. You want to be like Kenny G. <laughs> so uh, he, he tricked me. He didn't really give me a choice. He didn't say I had an option to do drums. He just kind of forced alto saxophone in my hands. And I stuck with that for my entire rest of grade school. Um, but I didn't really give my parents any idea that I wanted to play uh, an instrument or be involved in music prior to that moment. That was the defining moment for me as a musician. Okay. Um, now you said you, uh, you, you went to college. What, what college did you go to? I went to Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida. Okay. And did you major in, um, is there such thing as video game programming or computer science or? It, it was computer science was computer the, science. Was the okay. degree. Um, but the curriculum makes you kind of like pick which discipline you want to do. There's a lot of facets to making video games. Uh, and I, I just picked pretty much being a cinematic like movie animator. And then once I graduated, I kind of picked my own path to, to use that. But um, yeah, they, they kind of make you pick your discipline within computer science. Okay. And after college, is that when you really started to pursue uh, music? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of weird. I, I've always played around with music, you know, like listening to Radiohead and then trying to cover their songs and like picking up guitar after I played saxophone for a while. I always kind of sprinkle a little bit of musical experimentation in my life, but it was always just a just just like a hobby you know like something that I thought was there in case I just wanted to do it but I never took it too seriously and I, I didn't sing at all um until very very late maybe three years ago mm. so uh yeah it, it wasn't I didn't start taking myself as an artist seriously until well after I graduated college and I was already starting my career as a video game animator uh I, I don't know why it happened that way when I I could have you know, I sort of kick myself sometimes if I would have started so much uh, sooner in my younger years. Oh, man, like <laughs> I would have mastered so much by now. But, you know, it's, that's kind of how life works sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. OK, let's um, let's talk about this latest single. Um, um, on, only I only, pronounce yeah. that? Japanese only. Japanese word. Yeah, I, I read that uh, in the description. Um before we do that, um, let's talk about your previous music, because I uh, did some research and I saw that you had another single called Red Light. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. was that was a fun one. Yeah, that was was that 2020, I believe I read or when? Uh, when? Yeah, that that was released, I think, March or sometime spring 2020. OK, uh, I really enjoyed that one, too, by the way. Thank um, you. But all right. So let's let's get back to only. OK. So um, there's a story behind uh, this song. Um, we mentioned that only is a, is a Japanese term or Japanese word. Um, but tell us the meaning around only. Uh, so the song is basically, um, it's, it's part apology, part understanding the reckoning of your actions. Um, so I, I'm a very, when it comes to songwriting, I'm very analytical on my past, or at least I have been now. Uh, at most songs are always a finite experience or a finite encounter that I had with somebody. Um, Oni specifically um, relates to a relationship that I was in in LA. I was there for a contract job, and this was also prior to my mom passing away. Um, my contract job in LA ended and that was kind of the moment where I would have, you know, confessed my feelings and said like, oh, we, we should be more, et cetera. Um, but the passing of a family member meant that I had to, you know, leave the city abruptly, take care of family, figure out where my life goes after that point. And LA never felt like a home. So I, it, it, in the midst of all that trauma, I kind of forgot to tell um, the girl what happened so I, I essentially I just disappeared you know what I mean 
and that that's not a good feeling to have. Um, and I've learned way later on, like later down the road that, you know, that's a terrible feeling after I experienced it. And after spending some time alone, spending some time single, I kind of start to, to recollect on things. So Oni is kind of, the story is her perspective of me now. And I'm kind of writing in the song and singing that, like, I understand that I did something wrong and it, it hurts me to not be able to apologize, you know, or, or give you an actual explanation. I'm going to remain an Oni or a demon pretty much for the rest of both of our lives, uh, unless, you know, a miracle happens or something, or I have that chance to explain. So that that's kind of the, the whole premise of the, uh, of Oni and the, the music video kind of relays that feeling to me as well. It's that isolation of someone really that you care about and you want them to know why something happened, but you just can't explain it to them. You're, you're kind of trapped in an, in an endless, you know, lush, environment you know what i mean so that's yeah. that's kind of like the the gist of it okay. um and so the the song and also the video uh which i enjoyed um takes a um i guess it um meshes your music as well as your animation because the video is all animation yeah uh, yeah i made that made that by hand yeah okay um so how long has Oni been out? Uh, it's been about a week now. Oh, it just got released. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, just... And what's the, what's the early returns on that? How are people receiving it? Uh, well, a lot, of the, a lot of my peers are actually wowed by the, the video content. I, a lot of people like the song, and I've been told that, you know, a lot of people are curious about that same background of, like, you know, why am I calling myself an Oni? I think they... They assume only I'm this like super nice guy and they're like, why are you calling yourself a demon? That's that's weird. Uh, so I've, I've had to kind of explain that a little a couple of times. But the initial response is that the video uh, was way more than they were expecting coming from, you know, a solo developer. Um, and, and this was my first time using the Unreal Engine this is what the what the, the game engine that kind of houses everything that the video rendered. Uh, it was my first time using it. You know what I mean? So uh, a lot of people were shocked at that, at that. And uh, I'm excited to kind of show them where things go from there and how, how things improve. Okay. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you know, tell on myself age wise, but I guess you would have to be a gamer <laughs> to figure out what it only is. I, Cause I didn't know what that, what that was, but I guess maybe in the gaming world, you know, only is a demon. So yeah, it, it's prevalent in video games for sure. My, my, the producer that I'm working with said the exact same thing. He was like, what is, what is an Oni? And I was like, oh, to me, I, you know, video games like to find antagonistic things of, of, of any kind of um, culture, you know, and use that as an enemy uh, to kind of like, you know, white, white tape it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think a lot of gamers are familiar with the term. Um, a lot of big games that are recent have, you know, like oh, there's only masks in games, there's only enemies, there's only costumes. So it is a little bit of a video game trait, but I'm hoping that, you know, it, it's just one simple word that kind of easily defines um, the mood of the song. So I'm hoping that's not too much of a wall <laughs> for, for new listeners. Well, I mean, I learned a new word only, so I know. <laughs> Do you foresee um, that type of style in, 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 um, in uh, your next um, set of videos, or is this something that just kind of a one-off, or do you see the animation part playing a bigger part, or you know, playing just as big a part in your next um, next few songs? Or uh, I will say the animation plays a bigger role um, as as like more singles kind of like pop up. Um, I, I try to keep the style a little visually consistent. Uh, I don't I don't want it to be like too much an improvement between videos to where people are kind of like jarred from that um, character kind of, you know, remains the same. And so there's consistency with that. Uh, but I would say like the story kind of picks up a little bit more um, than, than kind of having like a visual background. Okay. And reading the information that I got um, says that you also help create 
um, one of Apple's uh, most popular games, um, Where Cards Fall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was the lead animator for that. Okay. And I'm not familiar with that game, but what's that game about? Um, so that one is a, it's, it's a kind of like a charming puzzler game. So it's something that you can kind of go to and play and then uh, just kind of like let your mind kind of decide what to do uh, in the game. But it's a, it's a story about kind of growing up. Um, it's, it's a coming of age story. You know, you make friends, you lose friends, you kind of go through life. There's struggles to that. It's a very heartwarming story about kind of one character going through. Uh, I'd say like their high school to like late college life. Um, so it, it's really just like a, a fun, pretty puzzler to play and, and relax to. Okay. And it's only available on the um, iOS system. It's uh, Apple Arcade is kind of like the, the system that it, that it uh, is, is purchased through. Apple Arcade is kind of like a little subscription and then you can play any game you want. It's, it's part of that. As far okay. as I know, it's only on iOS. Okay. I'm an Android guy. So that's the reason why I was asking. Um, I, I understand. <laughs> All right. So let's get back. Let's get back to music. Um, only is out. And are there any, is there any other new music that you're releasing um, this year? I guess it's almost over, but what's yeah. the, what's the plan going forward? Uh, I will say there's a lot of music coming fast. That's kind of the best way to, to put it. There's been a lot of uh, preparation and a lot, a lot of work <laughs> to make uh, all of this campaign kind of work. So there's a lot coming really fast. Um, and before you know it, though, it'll be almost like a, a TV show of music videos. Oh. <laughs> that's that's my little hint. All right. Um, I, I'm going to pry just a little bit more. Um, so is this coming in the form of more singles? Can we expect an album, an EP? Um, um, the, the end goal is an EP. Um, I, I'm kind of separating the EP to kind of create more singles because I just think that's how the music industry and how people are consuming music these days, um, especially being kind of like a new artist and a, a fresh take on how you make music and present music. I, I don't think it would have been useful to just start throwing a whole bunch out at once. So I'm spreading out as much as I can. And then uh, there'll be like little videos to accompany uh, each, each kind of like release. Okay. So um, being a new artist, how, um, are you very active on social media? I mean, have you done the, the Instagram and the Facebook lives and stuff like that? Do you plan on doing that or have you already done that? Uh, I'm, I'm working up to a lot of it. I would say I, I'm definitely an introverted person. Uh, so I, I kind of like to be quiet. I like to be a listener to the world more so than like someone that talks. Uh, but that doesn't really... <laughs> That's not a good strategy. For yeah, I was about to say, you're in the wrong head. business for that. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good strategy at all for being a new artist. So I'm kind of working towards, um, you know, the lives and like the releases and building like a community and talking to people. Um, uh, it's, it's something that has to work alongside the production of making these videos as a solo developer, which I, I don't think a lot of people realize like how much goes into making like just one two minute video or you know however long it is uh so i'm learning a lot on balancing uh work and life but i'm, I'm kind of like doing the best i can to still be authentic and be myself but then meet the needs of you know do these story posts and do these lives and, you know this 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 and that and branding you know what i mean so um one thing i I own up to is if I really want something, I'm going to do everything I can to, to achieve it. So social media and learning that properly is definitely part of that process. Okay. Um, being a, um, as you say, an introvert, um, do you plan on hitting the road and touring and doing club dates? And uh, cause it doesn't sound like that's part of the, the plan. I could be wrong, but. Um, what about uh, live performances? I, I would love to perform live. I, I do miss the days where, you know, I was playing in jazz band and that, that, that giant heat spotlight hits you 
and you start to like sweat a little bit and then you stand up and play your solo and you're super nervous, but your fingers start going and it's automatic. I love um, that, that feeling of having instrumentalists and, and, you know, professionals around you and you all kind of communicating to make, you know, a, a great performance. I, lo I love that. And I would like to do it again. I think it kind of depends on how the music, um, you know, like who, who it inspires and kind of what happens between like fan engagement would really dictate how I adapt. I, I like to adapt to circumstances. So if it presents itself, oh man, I'd love to, you know, practice as much as I can, spend hours in dress rehearsals, you know, meet people and perform. That would be amazing. I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit more about, um, well, you said you have some music that's coming out and you said it's going to be like an avalanche of videos and that kind of thing. Do you have a team of animators that you work with or are you just doing this all, um, this all is by all yourself? Me. So wow. I, I guess to kind of explain the full process, um, there are two disciplines in creating kind of like a, a 3D video game, essentially, or a 3D cutscene. There's two disciplines that I really don't like doing. I'm just annoyed by them. And that is what we call uh, character modeling and character rigging. So that's just at the very basis, you have to have a character that has a skeleton. And then the animator will animate that skeleton. And then there's like four, 14 other jobs <laughs> that are involved with kind of making a music video. So I commissioned out um, a friend of mine that I used to work with, shout out to Danya. I commissioned her to model the character. I kind of drew up what I wanted um, and I based the image off of myself. Uh, and then I had another friend, shout out to Asset Factory. Um, he did the character rig and then everything else is handled by myself. So um, I compiled, kind of arranged the environment. I did the lighting, I did the animation, uh, I did the rendering, I did any tweaks, compositing. Uh, it's pretty much largely a, a one-man show once it goes into the game engine. So it, it's tough, but if I had a team, I, that, that would be awesome. But currently it's just me. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, because, um, animation takes, you know, a while, I mean, I, I, I edit videos and I can't imagine trying to do, you know, animate, uh, characters. Um, how do you, how do you, uh, split your time between doing animation and doing, uh, and writing music? Uh, I don't, I don't sleep. That's pretty much the, that, that's the only way it's achievable, really. Uh, I, Oni, so I guess a little bit of background, Oni took nine months start to finish. Um, now you talking about that, the song or the video? Uh, the video. The song okay. took about, well, in terms of my work, the song I'd say took about a week um, to kind of, to build. Typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of arrange a song and arrange like kind of the samples that I want, the drums, et cetera, when the drum hits happen. And I'll write out the full song to that. And then I sent it to the, to Yarn um, as a producer and they kind of deconstruct the instruments around it and build it up with a talented team, talented professional artists that can do way better than I could uh, for instrument wise. Um, and then we kind of like either keep my vocals or re redo the vocals to make the song. So in terms of my process, the music is actually pretty quick. It's all, it's all straight from the heart. Um, you know, even, even based on genre, I make the song based on kind of what I like to my ear. And then I give it the lyrics that I think, you know, just, I, I feel like that tug in my heart and I kind of write that to it. So the, the song production is quick. I, I enjoy that, how quick it is, how much you can experiment, how you can jump in, jump out, try new things. Um, the animation though, it, that whole thing took nine months just to get that video to where it was. Um, oh. and, and it was just no sleep the entire time, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then after the video was done, then you sort of, do you take time to like to decompress and actually get some sleep? <sighs> no, I, I go <laughs> on to the next. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm hoping there's some time to sleep after, you know, everything's said and done, but <laughs> I just kind of, you know, the time is tight. I, I don't, I, I'm kind of like a workhorse at the same time. I have to yeah. be careful with that, but I'm hoping there's a little bit of a pause moment, 
you know, okay. maybe these, this holiday, uh, who knows? <laughs> any, hoping. any, any fear about, you know, getting burned out because you're, as you said, not sleeping. Uh, I mean, that, that is always a fear. I think no matter what, if you're working too hard, something is going to get sacrificed in terms of like your mental capacity. You just have to kind of pick which one, what thing it is. Um, and I, I've been trying to work a little bit better at like resting properly, getting at least, you know, like four and a half, six hours of sleep uh, so that I'm not destroying my day job on top of, you know, the side project or vice versa. I need, I need everything to still be good. So it's a big tug of war. Um, and I don't recommend doing what I'm doing. <laughs> like <laughs> give yourself time. It would be my recommendation, like no matter what, even if it's your passion and you have to do extra hours in the, in the afternoon or at night, you know, give yourself time to kind of let your brain keep up. Otherwise things start suffering. Um, so far I'm good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say that I've, I've had any big dips in quality so far, but you know, it's all a, a balancing act. It's a seesaw to try to make sure everything is going to work out. Um, but I'm just kind of just trusting God with half of it. <laughs> okay. Um, Foxworth, tell people how they can reach out to you on uh, social media or how they can, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah. So, so my name is F O X F R D. If you search Foxford on Instagram and, uh, actually if you go to foxford.com, you can pull up my website that has all my social links. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, but Instagram is Foxford, uh, TikTok and Twitter is Foxford official. Uh, that's, that's how it is for everything. Pretty consistent, pretty easy. Um, pretty much just F O X F R D will get you right to me. Okay. And where can people pick up Oni yet? So Oni is available on pretty much all platforms that I can think of. So if you're, if you're an Apple music fan, you, you can listen to the true audio, which is pretty nice. We worked pretty hard on that Spotify title, Amazon, you name it. Um, if you check out my Instagram at Foxford, there's actually a hyperlink in my bio for pretty much the YouTube video and every other outlet that you might might need. So quick way to do that. OK, um, anything else you want to add, Foxford? It's been a been a great conversation. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh, before we turn it loose? I would like to say thank you. I do appreciate you uh, interviewing me, especially being, you know, a, a young fairly fairly young artists i appreciate you taking that time out todd that's what we do man that's what we do i just keep putting out good music that's all i ask i'm doing my best <laughs> <laughs> all right foxford and we'll have links to all of foxford's um uh, social media connections on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com as well as, as in the show notes uh for this uh, this interview uh foxford appreciate you taking the time today sir thank you for having me all right. And that's Foxford on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Foxford. You can find out more about Foxford on his website at foxfordfxfrd.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.